This is part 19 of our 100% walkthrough for Oracle of Ages, and in this part we're going to be tackling the first half of the fourth dungeon in the game, the Skull Dungeon. That's a lot of numbers to throw out there at one time. <laughs> yeah, we've had parts like this where it is a lot of numbers, especially when you have like part one, part two, part three of oh, a yeah. dungeon. But one thing that like really attracted me first to this dungeon is with the lava, it looks like uh, Turtle Rock in Link's Awakening. I was always kind it of really a big does. fan of that dungeon. And also the fact that we're like we entered a volcano to start this dungeon. I thought the lava on the floor really went along with that well. And actually in this part we're going to be doing like most getting most of the dungeon yes. items. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be like getting the compass, the map, uh, we're going to be fighting the mini boss and we'll also be getting the actual dungeon item, the switch hook at the very end of this part. And then what the heck, I guess, is my question is, what do we do in the next video? Because we do, like you said, almost everything in this <laughs> video right here. Now, this block puzzle, we've had a couple up to this point, and they're pretty easy. But this is something that will actually get a lot more difficult as we go on throughout the game. And I kind of ended up hating it, really, as I went through the game more and more. So Me too. I agree. Like So far, like you said, they've been pretty simple with only like one block trying to get the one color. But as the game progresses, it just it's one of those things that just gets more and more annoying as the game goes on and gets more and more complicated. I'm not a huge fan of it, but actually a lot of the puzzles in this dungeon are color-based, and we'll see a lot of that a little bit later on. Yeah, that's true. We'll talk about the stoplight and the colors and all that when we get there, because that's kind of actually uh, frustrating to me. But one thing we kind of haven't been able to talk about a lot in this game, and we do it a lot in other Zelda games, is the themes. And like really for oh, Oracle yeah. games, like the themes just aren't that strong, but I really did like the theme of this dungeon. One that actually might be the only one in both Oracle games that I ended up liking. It's one of the very few ones that when uh, we went back and put together our favorite dungeon themes ranking video, which you oh. should check out on our YouTube page, by definitely, the way. Definitely, definitely. Um, this was, I remember thinking there was one theme from Oracle of Ages that I really, really liked. And I'm 99% sure this one was it because I'm with you. I really do like this theme. I do remember that ranking, actually, because I, I put it all together, but um, it was actually this one, and we both had it pretty high, so like I said, for an Oracle game, very surprising to get that. Now, one thing you'll see right here is the minecart, I believe we yes. already had that in another dungeon, but we, like, we do it quite a bit in this dungeon. That's one of those other things that just, I don't know, in 2D games or like handheld games, I've always liked the minecart addition to the dungeons. I think it just adds like a... Like a cool, cool visual, I guess you could say. Not like a minish cap cool visual that we got, but still somewhat yeah. of a cool visual. It definitely reminds me, though, speaking of minish cap, like they reused this in the Cave of Flames. Later on, when we get to the 3D Zelda games, you know, the minecarts played a bit of a role in Skyward Sword as well when we were exploring, um, I believe it was the shipyard in the Lantern of Sansi, which one of our favorite Zelda areas, yeah. by the way. I didn't like I that minecart ride, though, in Skyward Sword because <laughs> that one was tough right there. I just kept on falling off with those motion controls, so that was, that was while it was fun it was definitely tough but go ahead but I, ever since i think like it was donkey kong country like the first one on super oh, nintendo yes when you got the minecart levels is the first thing that made me that i always think of with these and i loved those so when we encounter these dungeons that have the minecarts in them it always brings back a nice like memory of those donkey kong country uh minecart levels but those were hard speaking of well, kind of going to another franchise like i'm like with you the donkey kong country turns i mean that was such a great game and some of those concepts, like you just mentioned, have been applied to other games, and yep. like it, it takes me back to those uh, minecart uh, levels too in Donkey Kong. Because I remember the first time I got there, I was like, "This is one of the coolest things <laughs> I've ever done in a video game." And then, like, well, kind of changing subjects and actually talking about the game we're doing. Eh, uh, whatever. I really, li <laughs> I, I really like this room right here. I think it's kind of cool that you like pull me too. on this lever. And then like this floor goes over to lava, and it's like kind of time, so you have to get across it like quickly. But just a cool concept that we really hadn't had up to now in a Zelda game. And I also just like the visual of that like lava waterfall, I guess you would call it. We had one a Agreed. little earlier in the dungeon that we were kind of talking about something else, of course. Go figure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that never happens. Cool visual. <laughs> and, and I'm with you. I like that puzzle. It's just later on there will be a time or two we have to do it where there's barely enough time to get across there without uh, without getting caught by the lava, and you got to use the actually the Pegasus seeds, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that we'll get a little bit later. Yep. So, but that that's a little bit further away in the, in the now, dungeon. Now you'll see right there. I use the uh, Gale seeds to uh, get those hard hat beetles out of the way. Smart I'm idea. I'm telling you, man, it's just like wrong to have a hard hat beetle on the other side of a lava jump. I mean, that's I just that's just cruel right there. But that's an easy way <laughs> to kind of get rid of them. I wouldn't really recommend jumping over that part if you don't have to. Oh, because they'll knock you right back into that lava. And oh, as definitely. You saw, like. It's kind of near the beginning of the dungeon. We had a little bit of a, of a 
missed. I didn't see falling. anything. <laughs> I didn't see any lava problems at the beginning of the dungeon. <laughs> well, it's just annoying when you fall in the lava because you do have to restart the room altogether, and it it can be a bit tedious. It's not the end of the world, but uh, you know, it's it's just an annoyance. And <laughs> so, anything that makes it easier to avoid the lava, we're all for. <laughs> definitely, definitely agree. Now, here's one thing: while I was talking about the stoplights, I thought I'd wait till this time to mention it. Okay, and the stop. Well, forget. I thought they had. Uh, no, the blocks have red, yellow, and blue on them. Now, you see the light only has red and blue, so I actually was thinking wrong on this. <laughs> but I don't know why they didn't have, like, okay, you have the block that's red, yellow. I don't know why they didn't switch out, like, blue for green in this yeah. game. It just seems like the uh, obvious concept, I guess, unless maybe there's blue stoplights in uh, Japan. Maybe that could maybe. be the reason behind it, so I don't know. I, I honestly have no idea. That That's an excellent question, but it is kind of a funny thing. But speaking of that, though, but look at the green on this platform that's moving back and forth, though. And to me, that just stood out as so bright, and it really didn't fit anything else with the rest of this dungeon. Like, the walls are a different shade of green. That green on that yeah. platform just looks so bright for some reason. I kind of agree with you on that. Like, you know, I really haven't ever thought about it until you just mentioned it, but it does look a little bit out of place. Now, one thing, I think those platforms are out of place anyways because they're so easy to, like, jump off of those yes. or miss those platforms and go in the water. So I'd rather just not even have them. In Me this too. dungeon at all, but I do agree, like, that light shade of green, just to, I guess, have a minor complaint with the get. Well, I actually got a ton of complaints about this game, but yeah, that light green oh, we got plenty of with, them, yeah. like, the, uh, the red lava, even though we kind of do see green on the wall, so, but I'm kind of with you in agreement on that one, so... I do kind of like the idea of these, of the train tracks, of having to, like, flip these switches to, or train tracks, I'm sorry, minecart tracks, of uh, having to hit these same switches, thing. or get the, yeah, same thing, <laughs> um, of getting them to switch... So that you can progress um, and like change the way they face things like that. It's just whether it's using the colored blocks to make them switch or hitting them with your sword. It's just it just adds another little bit of variety of puzzle to it. Now that room we just went through right there, that's actually a very tough room because you have to hit all those um, Stalfos to oh actually get the door to open. And like yep. the, you see, the mine cart's only going in one direction. So if you miss them, you kind of I don't remember if you had to like exactly restart the room or not, but I you think have to you do, do something. It's just a very difficult room, and well, so is this one right here yeah. because <laughs> jumping across platforms and lava, like I said, I am not a huge fan of. Well, we've never had a lot of platforming in the 2D Zelda games where we've had to jump from like platform to platform like that. I mean, even with the Rock's Feather, I feel like it's normally just you know jump over this gap, jump over this yeah, gap. Uh -huh, definitely. But in this game, in this or in that room, it added that added. It almost felt like a Mario type thing, like jumping from moving platform to moving platform and trying to avoid the lava. It, it felt very Mario like. And I really chanced that last one. I don't know if you saw it or not, but it was kind of going away, and I'm yep. not sure why I exactly <laughs> jumped right there, but I ended up barely making it. But it's kind of like you said, like on that one, I was in the very, uh, I think the very last platform. If you missed that, you have to go to the beginning of the room and. It yeah. kind of can be a pain a little bit, so. I will give you credit, though, back in that, because we were kind of talking over, that room that had the Stalfos you had to hit with your uh, seed shooter, the one you hit that was totally off oh, the yeah. screen when you got him, I got to give you props for that. That was a hell of a heck of a shot. I, I thought you that know, was a really good shot. <laughs> there's sometimes, like, when I practice something, I, like, you know, that's the reason I do good at it. I think I hit that mini Moldorm every single time in practice. <laughs> it's just one of those things I got lucky, and I when I actually shot it, I thought it was going to hit him, but just it was pure luck right there. Hey, it works. <laughs> definitely, now how about definitely. the mini boss, uh, Armos Warrior? I was a big fan of this mini boss, actually. I just think he looks really, really cool. Well, first of all, I don't know how somebody with a shield that big can actually even fight. I mean, how he even <laughs> walks around with that thing is beyond me, but I'm, I agree with you. Like, I thought it was a very cool looking mini boss. In this game, we just got a lot of mini bosses that I've always felt were kind of a joke. They were too easy to kill. Yeah. And this is like an intimidating boss, and he actually can get kind of tricky when he starts moving around the room faster and faster. He really is, because you've got to get that sword lined up to where it'll actually hit him when he's like, you know, chasing after you. Yeah, uh -huh. and, the, and the faster he moves, it's the more difficult it is. But I like that concept of hitting him with his own sword. I think that was a, just a fun and different idea, and it made for a fun mini-boss fight. As you can see, I was kind of going around the outside. I kind of found that the easiest way to do it when I was practicing because that kind of gets his sword across him because he actually never goes to the like the outside ring. So kind of yeah. just stay on the outside right there and go back and forth, and he shouldn't be that hard. And then you saw the last stage of the fight. That was 
pretty much a joke. He just rushes you and you just get out of the way. So yeah, the last stage was very easy, which kind of made it. It made up for the fact that the first part could be a little bit tougher if you couldn't line up those sword shots. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I do agree with you. But usually the second part of the boss fight is the one... Well, it's not usually. It should be the harder uh, stage than the first one. But that one, like the second stage, was definitely a lot easier. Now, these rooms I mentioned a little Sorry, earlier. Sorry, I, I didn't have anything else after that. I kind of just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned earlier that like some color dungeons really or color puzzles really do come into play. This is one of those where you have to totally fill up every tile on the floor without backtracking. It can be a pain if you don't have a pattern put in front of you, but this will help us get the switch hook. But now that we get that, this wraps up part 19 of our uh, Oracle of Ages 100% walkthrough.